stop. Don't click off this video. You need to hear this. You are not a doormat. Yeah, you. UC Berkeley defines boundaries as the limits and rules we set for ourselves within relationships. Sometimes they may be hard to set or come with some not so ideal situations, but they are healthy and necessary. How good are you at setting boundaries? Let's do a quick check. Here are five signs you have poor boundaries. Number one, guilt. Quick, what's the most powerful word that's only two letters? No, F-U isn't a word. Did you guess it? The answer is no. The word no can not only stop something from happening or continuing, but it can also make you feel bad for saying it. Wait, did I read the script right? Uh, yeah, saying no actually makes some feel guilty. In an article she wrote, Dr. Eileen Strauss-Cohen, PhD, Psychology Today writer, explains that we experience this guilt because we feel prioritizing ourselves over someone else's wrong. It's not. Let's use one of licensed professional counselor Tom Whitehead's examples of poor boundaries from his scholarly article on the subject. You have a friend who loves to talk on the phone and they call you all the time. You don't enjoy talking as much and prefer texting, but you don't wanna be a bad friend by not answering the call. What do you do? Setting a boundary can help. You can tell your friend that you don't mind them calling on the weekends, but you can't talk during the week. This way, you don't feel bad for not answering the calls and your friend doesn't think you're ignoring them. Two, inconsistency. Okay, hear us out. Have you ever been talking to someone and they give you mixed messages? You're left confused and not sure if you should tell people you're seeing someone or keep it on the DL. The same concept with boundaries. I have a friend, we'll call them James. James does not like the names Jim nor Jimmy. If someone calls him one of those names, he'll politely correct them. Imagine if James said he preferred James randomly, but not every time. It might get really confusing for friends and family to know what name you prefer if you aren't consistent. This principle, along with how to create, set, and maintain a boundary are all explained in the Holistic Psychologist video, A Beginner's Guide to Setting Boundaries. Number three, indecision. We don't care who you are. No one likes answering the question, what do you wanna eat? I want food, duh. However, did you know, not being able to answer questions like this consistently might be a sign of having poor boundaries. Psychology writer Andrea Darcy and Dr. Sherry Jacobson explain that someone without boundaries may have lost their sense of self. When you are faced with a decision, you might be more concerned with what will please others rather than what you would prefer. If no one else is there to give feedback, you might even freeze up and not be able to decide on anything. So going back to what do you wanna eat? Do you normally say, oh, whatever you want? Or do you give a thoughtful answer? If you said the former, you may have poor boundaries. Number four, you should know. Have you ever been really annoyed with someone for something they did? But when they ask what's wrong, you say, if you don't know why I'm upset, I can't help you. Everyone was raised differently. And what you were taught is wrong, rude, or inconsiderate may not be the same for someone else. So when you assume someone should know what they did is wrong, they may actually not know. This is why communication and boundaries are imperative. Psych Central lays this down in their article, Why Personal Boundaries Are Important and How to Set Them, written by Leah Campbell and Saidi Bethany Chuby. If there is something that bothers you, you are responsible for letting others know. Unless you state your limits in no uncertain terms and maintain it, others will not know to respect this boundary. And number five, skewed priorities. Going out of your way for someone or doing someone a favor is awesome but do you tend to do this more often than not? In her video and article, Nine Signs of Poor Boundaries, Dr. Romani Dervasula explains that focusing on others' wants, needs, and opinions to the point of exhaustion can be a sign of poor boundaries. When you put yourself first, you show that you know your worth and that you're important. Having the opposite reaction can be a learned response to a trigger or a series of traumatic events. That intense and constant focus on others won't allow you to focus on yourself making you unable to do, well, anything on your own. So don't stop doing that weekly good deed, but remember to put yourself first more often. Try it, tell us what happens. Setting a boundary can be really difficult, especially if it brings up negative emotions in others. Never forget that it's not wrong to set a boundary. So how did you do? Do you show any of these signs of poor boundaries? What helps you remember your worth? Share in the comments below. As always, keep an eye on site for more Psych2Go content. 
See you next time.